In this session we are going to think about what happens when a business is short of a particular resource and how we can ensure that that resource is used most effectively to produce the highest profits for the business. We call this topic limiting factor analysis and this is a crucial topic area for short-term decision making within any manufacturing business. You should note that some businesses may have other objectives rather than profit maximization but for the purposes of this video and this topic area we are going to assume that profit is the main objective for any business. The main types of resources that could be scarce or limited are labour hours, machine hours or materials. It is possible that more than one of these is in short supply, but this cannot be dealt with using limiting factor analysis. Instead you would need to use linear programming which is covered on another video. This video will therefore focus on what happens when just one resource is scarce either labour hours, machine hours or a single material used within the production process. The first thing we need to do when considering a problem of this nature is determine which resource is scarce. It is possible that there are details provided to you that suggest more than one resource is limited, so you need to determine which resource is the one that is actually limited. The way that we do this is by looking at total demand for each product we make and how much of each resource is needed to meet that maximum demand. This will identify which resource, if any, does not allow us to fulfil the demand and it is this resource that is classed as the limiting factor. Let's consider this scenario. Percussion Limited has demand for 2000 units of product Zing. Each unit of Zing takes 3 hours of machine time, 2 kilograms of material pop and 8 hours of labour. Percussion has the following resources available 8,000 machine hours, 4,500 kilograms of pop and 15,000 hours of labour. To make the 2,000 units, Percussion will need to utilise 6,000 machine hours, that is 2,000 units multiplied by 3 hours per unit, 4,000 kilograms of pop, 2,000 units multiplied by 2 kilograms per unit, and 16,000 hours of labour. 2,000 units multiplied by 8 hours per unit. As Percussion Limited only has 15,000 labour hours available, this is our scarce resource and the factor that will limit our production. Given that there are only 15,000 labour hours available, this means that Percussion can only make 1,875 units, calculated as 15,000 hours divided by 8 hours per unit, rather than the full demand of 2,000 units. Once we know what the scarce resource is, we then need to plan our production volumes to ensure we optimise the use of the resource and thereby maximise profits. Remember, we are always going to assume that profit maximisation is the main objective of the business. The easiest way to cover this is to go through an example. Here we have Good Job Limited. They make three products, the good, the better and the best. Demand for each product is 2,500 units, 1,500 units and 1,000 units respectively. A single unit of good takes 2 labour hours, 4 machine hours and 1 kilogram of material X. A single unit of better takes 3 labour hours, 3 machine hours and 1.5 kilograms of X and each best takes 4 labour hours, 2.5 machine hours and 1.75 kilograms of X. Good Job Limited has the following resources available 14,000 labour hours, 16,000 machine hours and 7,000 kilograms of X. So, as before, the first thing we need to do is calculate the scarce resource. Let's consider labour hours first of all. To make the 2,500 units of good, we will need 5,000 hours. To make 1,500 betters, we need 4,500 hours and to make 1,000 bests we need 4,000 hours. This totals 13,500 hours, so is within our capacity of 14,000 labour hours. With regards to machine hours, we will need 10,000 hours to make 2,500 units of good, 4,500 hours to make 1,500 units of better, and 2,500 hours to make 1,000 units of best. This totals 17,000 hours, which is more than the 16,000 hours available and is therefore a limiting factor or scarce resource. 
For completeness, we should also look at material X to ensure that this isn't also a scarce resource. We will need 2,500 kilograms of X to make 2,500 goods, 2,250 kilograms to make 1,500 betters, and 1,750 kilograms to make 1,000 bests. So in total we need 6,500 kilograms, which can be covered by the 7,000 kilograms we have available. We now know that the only scarce resource is machine hours, so we now need to plan our production based on this restriction. In order to determine how many of each product we should make, we need to know how much money we can make from each product. Our focus is to ensure that we look at how much money we can make per machine hour, as this is the resource we are trying to make the best use of. The way we find this is to calculate the contribution per unit of scarce resource machine hours in this case. But before we can do that we need to know the contribution per unit. To find this we need to know the selling price per unit and the variable costs per unit. In the case of Good Job Limited's product range the following data applies. The selling price for a unit of good is $27 and the variable costs are $5 for materials, $16 for labour and $4 for variable overheads. This gives a contribution of $2 per unit. A better sells for $41 and variable costs total $37.50, giving a contribution of $3.50 per unit. And a best sells for $51.50 with variable costs of $48.25, giving a contribution of $3.25 per unit. At first glance you might conclude that the best product to make is the better as it generates the highest contribution per unit, but we need to bear in mind how many machine hours it takes to make each unit so that we maximise the total contribution we can generate from all of the products we can make with the limited 16,000 machine hours. Now that we know the contribution per unit we need to take this one step further and calculate the contribution per machine hour so we need to remind ourselves of how many machine hours each product takes. A good takes four machine hours to make so the contribution per hour is 50 cents. A better takes three machine hours giving a contribution per hour of $1.17 and a best takes two and a half machine hours giving a contribution per hour of $1.30. Based on these figures we can now see that the product that makes the best use of the available machine hours is the best so we will want to make as many of these as we can before moving on to making betters which generate the next best contribution per machine hour and then finally we can use up any remaining hours making goods which generate the lowest contribution per machine hour. Having worked out which order we should make our products we now need to calculate how many of each we can make with the available machine hours. Starting with bests, we should make the full demand for these if we are able to with the available machine hours. If each best takes two and a half machine hours to make and total demand is for 1,000 units, this means we would utilise two and a half thousand hours to make the 1,000 units, leaving 13 and a half thousand hours available to make betters and goods. The total demand for betters is 1,500 units and they each take three machine hours so a further 4,500 hours will be utilised to make these, leaving 9,000 hours that can be used to make goods. As each good takes 4 hours to make, we can make 2,250 units with this remaining 9,000 hours. The demand for goods was 2,500 units, so we can see that we cannot make 250 units given the restricted machine hours. The final step we can take is to work out the total contribution we will generate by following this production plan. We can use the contribution per unit that we have already calculated and multiply this by the number of units from our production plan. Each best generates a contribution of $3.25 per unit and we plan to make 1,000 units. Betters generate $3.50 contribution per unit and we plan to make 1500 units, so the total contribution for betters will be $5,250. And goods generate $2 contribution per unit, and we plan to make 2,250 units. The total contribution for all three products being made is therefore $30,000.